in action, can you? Well, here you can. <laughs> I always show up prepared, you know me. <laughs> I'm in the way, I guess you can't see. I'm pushing this down and I'm pressing the coffee through the filter. I'm making myself a little espresso because it is traditional to have a little espresso with today's pastry. Okay, now I am prepared. That is a very tasty espresso. Thank you to Mike for the Brita. Thank you to Tracy for the kettle, and thank you to Christina G for the AeroPress. All of these have been combined to create the perfect cup of coffee. And thank you, Dad, for sending me the, the Gucci beans. Really, perfect cup of coffee here. Today's pastry originates from Portugal. So no, it's not a, it's not a lingua treat specifically, but when I discovered that there is a place that sells pesto genata here in Lille, I mean, come on, they're delicious. And I told you a couple of times, I really like flan. And every time I see flan at one of these patisseries, I really have to stop myself from getting a piece of flan. And this is why I have saved my flan appetite for these joyous, adorable little pastries. The place that makes these here in Lille is called Dona Vica, and I've never been there. I didn't even know that we had a place like this, but it very much has the vibe of a little pasto genata place in Portugal. It's small. It's a place where you just walk in. You have platters of pasto genata, and you ask for however many you want, and you can get your espresso there. And they also had a couple of other pastries that I really would have liked to try, but they don't serve them on Sundays. I was a little disappointed to discover that. I was really hoping that they would have Bola de Berlin. It's like a cream-filled custard donut, if I recall. It was something that I was really crazy about when I visited Porto, which is the first place where I ever had pasto genata. That's also the reason why I have my Bologna Macchiolata Whitey plants back here, because Porto is the place where I discovered Begonia Maculata Whitey. There was this big, beautiful begonia in the Airbnb where I was staying. And that's how I ended up creating a channel called Betsy Begonia. I became completely obsessed with this plant and I decided to start a YouTube channel. And I, this idea, I started cooking it up that spring while I was in Porto and during this period of time. And then in the summer, I ended up creating my channel. And I had just been so heavily influenced by this beautiful plant that I decided to call my channel Betsy Begonia. Plus alliteration, you know? It's easy to remember, it's a cute name. Can't go wrong. I am, I'm a sleepy person today. I woke up earlier than I had planned. I got up at four and I couldn't get back to sleep so I just got up and took charge of the day. I cleaned out my entire laundry room. I disassembled this like big structure that I bought when we went into lockdown. It's like a, a structure where you can like do pull-ups and dips and abs. And I used it until the gyms opened, but now that the gyms are open, I don't use it. So I'm getting rid of it and replacing it with a grow tent for my, <laughs> for my plants, which is a much more efficient use of that space. So I got up and I cleaned out that laundry room and I'm just, I've basically lived my day. This is the end of my day. <laughs> I went out of town to the only hardware store that was open because I'm also building a table. I have like a bunch of projects going on right now. So after this and after editing, I'm going to be watching School of Chocolate on Netflix, which I just started the other day, but I haven't even made it through an entire episode yet because I haven't had time, but it's really good and I'm really into it right now. So I'm gonna watch School of Chocolate and I'm gonna build a table and then I might install a grow tent in that room. Have I not done enough talking? Let's get to it. So, Dona Bica, they don't really have much information about the establishment on the website. It's just like, this is where you can get Festo Genata in Lille. The end. So I don't really know much about it. 
who established it, why it's here, or anything like that. And so I cannot provide much information about it in that regard. All I can do is eat these pesto gianata and um, tell you what I think. If, well, my first impression is that, and let me see if I can get it on the microphone. It's just that they have a really beautifully flaky crust on the outside. When I was in Porto in, I think it was 2018, every place I stopped, or every place I passed that had these, I was like, what? I gotta try it. I gotta find the best place, because this is how I am when I travel. If there is one reason why I travel, it is to taste all of the sweet things wherever I'm going. That is my main objective. I wanna find out what is the sweet delicacy and where can I get it and how can I find the best one? Truly one of the only reasons why I, I mean, I like culture, you know? I, I like architecture, I like art, I like all sorts of things, but I really love sweet stuff. And I love traveling and trying all the sweet goodies that any place has to offer. So I wandered all over Porto. Every time I passed a window that had these, I would step in and, and, and get one real quickly and then eat it while I was walking down the street. I was like a total pig. All of that really just to say that sometimes you get past the Janata that have a regular old pie crust and it's not flaky at all. So I, I'm pleased to find out that these have a really flaky crust, but you know, what else could you expect in France? I'm editing this video and I just realized I talked about going to Porto and I completely forgot to mention that when I was in Porto, I saw the president of Portugal. I was at the market, and he was at the market, and it was a really big deal. That's my story. Enough is enough. It's time for me to try one of these before they get cold. <sighs> you know what? It's missing cinnamon. It's a crime. It should have cinnamon on it. You know, French people are not so into cinnamon, it seems to me. Not a lot of cinnamon floating around this place. You get a little bit of cinnamon maybe in a pan de guise, like a spiced bread, gingerbread. It is very rare that you get cinnamon on anything else. So I can understand why they wouldn't automatically put cinnamon on pastor genata, but man, that's, it's just, it's really lacking the cinnamon. Yeah. Much better. Mm. Perfect combo. Wonderful crust. Now the inside, let me see if I can get a uh, close up on my camera. Fudja! <laughs> I really need to just like be a slug on the sofa today. The inside is very gooey. This is my favorite type of pasta de nata that's just really ooey gooey in the center. Sometimes you get them and they're, they're pretty firm like flan. But when I was in Porto, there was one place that was quite popular in the area. I don't remember the name of it, but it was like one of the main establishments where people would go for these in the morning with their espresso. And the inside is just like really creamy and milky. This might gross some people out. I know that not everybody is a meat eater, and this might gross you out. But if you're like me, and you really like bone marrow, like when I make a pot au feu, I like to put a couple of bones in there, and then after that's all cooked. One of the most delightful parts of a pot au feu is taking the bone marrow out of the bones and spreading it on a piece of bread. <sighs> the same like ooey, gooey, soft, fatty consistency. It's really, really nice. That's just a really wonderful treat. I love flan, I love custard, so this is right up my alley in terms of my favorite things. And I also like the history of them. They were created in the 18th century by monks and nuns who would use a lot of egg whites to starch their linens, and so they had to do something with all those egg yolks, and they created this recipe for the pesto gianata, and that's how it came to be, so it's an, it's an interesting story. All right, I'm gonna get this show on the road because once this espresso hits my veins, I have a table to put together, I have a laundry room to finish cleaning, my entire apartment smells like vinegar right now, and I would prefer that it did not. So, as for the atmosphere, 
I would say maybe yucky, maybe yummy. I don't know. It's really just a little bar that you go to to go get your pasta ginata, your espresso, and then be on your way. There's not really much to say for the atmosphere inside. The people were nice to me, of course. There is an area in the back, like a patio, where you can sit when the weather is nice. But I, I didn't really get that experience because it's, it's a pretty chilly and foggy day and also I, I had to come back here and film this for you. As for the selection, well, yummy, I guess, because <laughs> you only go there for one thing and it's the pasto ginata. So, um, yummy, you know. And for the tastiness, I'm gonna go with super yummy. They do get a little, they get half a point taken away for not at least asking me if I would like to have cinnamon on them. I had to like use my own cinnamon here, okay? These are supposed to have cinnamon on them, but I'm gonna go ahead and give them a super yummy because the consistency and everything about this is totally perfect. I really love it, it's very satisfying to me. All right, that's all I have for you today. I'm going to, um, I'm either gonna get a lot of stuff done or I'm gonna go sit on my couch and absolutely crash. <laughs> I hope you have a good Sunday. I'll see you tomorrow.